and go again and go again and be relentless. Yeah, massive respect. Nice. There you go. Uh, we forgot to do a quick one on the uh, in, uh, in quick England. Uh, sound that, well, the England. Sound that, the, the predictions. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm being told <laughs> something slightly. What's in, your, what's in your water bottle? <laughs> Muttering and stuttering. <laughs> I shouldn't have done 15 Jaeger bombs before the show. Uh, you um, dark brew, you. Quick, uh, quick predictions uh, for the England game. I think it's going to be a cracker. I think it's set up to be probably the game of the weekend. England coming into the weekend with fine form. My personal opinion. South Africa probably not quite where they were going into a Rugby World Cup final in 2019. I definitely don't see it as a revenge game from an England perspective. Uh, a lot of this group was, weren't involved in 2019, so Eddie Jones will be looking to sort of be laying a new foundation for 2023. I just think that Springbok pack up front, uh, the likes of Eben, Sia, Dwayne, uh, you know, that okay. bench coming on, Malcolm yeah. Marks, Stephen Kitzel, Vincent Koch. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to be great. We, I think Andre Pollard and Kubis Reinoff are back uh, in, in the starting lineup as well. So I think it'll be close. I reckon box by four. I don't know how, but box by four. I, but I think it's set up to be a phenomenal game of rugby. Uh, hoping the weather plays a spot. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Box by four. That's um that's the key point there. See Reinach, he him coming in and starting at nine again. He just changed the game. He's unbelievable. Yeah. He's such a good player. So yeah, Yantis didn't have a great game in the first half, and then when they brought him on, he just changed the game. So mm. with him with him starting, and like you said, your old mate Pollard back in there. Oh, it's going to be a tight one, isn't it? Tight, it's yeah. going to be a tight yeah. one. Just yeah. because I don't like England, I'm going to say <laughs> yeah, South Africa by three. That's to get some of those um those oh. Rassi, Rassi Erasmus fans back on my side. Like, <laughs> you, I voted for you to beat South Africa. I like his pants. I do. When was uh, when Max, was the last time that when was the last time that England beat South Africa? It's been a while, hasn't it? 20, 2018. That Cipriani, oh. uh, the Cipriani Owen Farrell. Oh, that's not right, looking at yeah. each other, enjoying when Cipriani did a little kick into the corner. Is that one? No, yeah, no, no, no. 2018? No. no. So was involved 2018, was he? Yeah, he came. He only, he went, he, he went his last his four. last cap was 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 yeah, was there was that one. And he came on as a sub. And then there's quite good footage of Owen Farrell looking really uh slightly annoyed at him for for for, for putting a kick away in an attacking position, which Johnny May then ends up scoring on in, into the corner. Um we 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 sort of discussed it last week, but it is a quick one, Brian. Doesn't it show the ridiculous strength and depth that South Africa have that Faf de Klerk, you know, for many, one of the best scrum halves in the world is out and you've got somebody that we are talking about as changing, you know, the game against Scotland. It's, but you've, you've had so much strength and depth in that position for so many years. Yeah, I wouldn't say we've had it in depth, Mark, not to, but yeah, I think, you know, we, it's taken a while to get to the point where both Faf, Quiver, Social Yankees, you know, are sort of guys that can, you know, fill the void. I think, you know, post the Farid Priya era, you know, it took, took a bit of a while to find some stability in, in the 9, 10 axis. Obviously, Henry, Henry Pollard, you all know how phenomenal he is. And I mean, and this is no jokes aside, I reckon in my prime, Kubis Reinach would have given me a real good go in terms of speed. Like a real good, like I'm, I'm not even joking. Like I'm not sure if you saw the try for Montpellier. He scored three weeks yeah. ago where he ripped it from, from the eighth. Ripped and it off like and, yeah. just, just all the way through. He is proper pacey. Uh, I think, yeah, Herschel has been struggling more from a tactical perspective in terms of, you know, his kicking ability. He hasn't really commanded that space. And like Ryan says, I think, you know, Kubis came on and, and really just made... And a nine that can not only clear from the base quick, but really be a threat around the rack, which Kubis is physically imposing on, I think is great. So, yeah, I think we, we are extremely fortunate to have almost like a similar type of strength in what a second stringer would be. Um, so having that backup, having that depth. And again, they might be a little bit older now than in 2019, but they're playing, he, Kubis in particular is playing some great rugby. So brilliant to have that. And yeah, hopefully Fuff comes back sooner rather than later. Quick one on, I mean, you were covering that game, Brian, but um, Ryan, Stuart Hogg, your mate, amazing two tries to equal the international record for his country. Word on his achievements so far and his performance. 
Yeah, he's been brilliant. He's um he's a passionate Scotsman, isn't he? And he, he you see the way he plays. He absolutely like lives for it. So um the what he's done for Scotland already at such a young age, well, he's getting old now and he he he's trying to look young. We always keep changing his hair and I think his teeth are now oh, he's done something to his gnashes, but um he is <laughs> Invisalign or being no, Invisalign. No, 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 mate. There's more than Invisalign there. <laughs> Nothing, wrong with Invisalign, Nothing wrong with Invisalign, Dan. Nothing wrong with Invisalign. That's the tea stretch. No, no, no. Hey, hey, <laughs> Invisalign. Another sponsor. Good. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, incredible bloke, incredible player and uh, an asset to Scotland. And it's so good to see him captain Scotland play so well as well at the same time. So good on you, Hoggy, mate. I just, I just want to say on that, I actually got to spend some time with Hoggy at a Laureus appearance last week, Wednesday. I feel thought it was brilliant, you know, with all the COVID protocol and everything going on. And I think Hoggy came down and was sort of giving back to the School of Hard Knocks from Fife um, and inspiring sort of a new generation of players. And to have the the Scottish captain, you know, in a massive test week come out and just show, again, you know, the passion that he has for the game, but the inspiration that it is. And like, like, like Brian says, I think he does wear his heart in his sleeve. I think he's, he's a brilliant player. I think there's a reason why, you know, he's been a British on Irish line from such a young age. And I think he's, he's really grown into the leadership role within, you know, within that Scotland setup. I think Gregor Townsend is giving him a lot of freedom to just be the Stuart Hogg that we all know. But that first try of the gentleman, oh, that was a thing of beauty. Like I was sitting there in that prime video box and I was like, no, nah. no, nah, I was like tipping my hat. I was like, that type of rugby play is just, so gorgeous it was oh it was lush it was absolutely lush even as a South African I would have to recognize that it was special a quick one just on on South Africa and you know they've, they've got a bit of stick uh, over the last few months or about the style of play you're such an attacking player in your day so much talent at their disposal now would, would you like to see South Africa playing a more uh, expansive style so Jamie Roberts said that the dioxyrobe nucleic acid, the DNA, the DNA, gentlemen, the nice. DNA. The acronym for the like very good. So I keep some acid. drinks there. So, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, the DNA of those box is, you know, that physicality that we need. <laughs> Evolution, I think, is, un- is going to be key and, and they will eventually get there. And if one looks back, I think, you know, we were all potentially looking at how the spring box would you know, even give England any worry going into a rugby world cup final, but they literally blew England off the park and scored two fantastic tries um, by their wingers, not by their forwards. So given COVID, given the pandemic, you know, they had what just over, just over 19 months of no international rugby. And, you know, the Lions series unfortunately won't be remembered for the rugby but I think the mental resilience that Springbok camp came out, there was COVID cases, COVID bubbles, and they were in camp for 19 weeks. And I know sometimes things are boring, but there's a lot of factors to consider when that is your DNA, when teams know how you want to play, but they can't match that. You know, do you, do you fix something that ain't broke, you know, or do you break it to then try to fix it? So I was a part of many a Springbok side where we got constantly abused for not playing a particular style of rugby but when you get wins and you become successful within that yeah so yes I think we'd all love to see an evolution of the game you know world rugby are trying to change certain rules and laws to make you know the game more entertaining more exciting bring in a new fan within the rugby space but the Springbok DNA I don't think it's something you want to be too far away from and again there are moments in the history you know England 2007, 36-0, where people said that, you know, Jake's white spring box were very, very boring. Um, and, yeah, managed to know. So, no, it doesn't worry me. I think when the teams play towards their strength, when coaching contracts, player contracts, player selection, everything is on the line, what is more important? The tri column, the, the way you play, or the W at the end of the 80 minutes? And I think for the spring box, the W is incredibly important because winning is within them and yeah so yes we would love to see an evolution but i'll take a win over pretty rugby any day 